Good morning, Beulah! Good morning! Amen. Praise God. I would tell you to honk your horn if you really love the Lord just one time for us this morning. Can you? Yeah! 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 Amen. We sound like we got some folk come here to have church this morning. That is exactly what we come to do, is to bless the name of the Lord. For he is risen. He is not dead. God has risen him out of the grave, and Jesus is alive. We greet you this morning with the joy of Jesus. We thank God for you for coming and worshiping with us in our sunrise service, our Easter service, our drive-in worship service. Thank God that you've taken the time to come and share with us. Those are online. We praise God for you being with us and sharing with us in our worship today. We're excited for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. from Jesus Christ, our Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. On this most holy morning in which Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, we gather as the church to worship the dawning of his triumph and resurrection. We join with the whole company of God's people in heaven and on earth in recalling and celebrating his victory over death and our deliverance from the bondage of sin and darkness to everlasting life. Today, we come to worship a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Join in with our choir for our hymn of praise, lovely hymn that says, Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lived. Join in with our wife.
Amen. Praise God. Because he lives. Amen. We can face tomorrow. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father and our God, creator of the universe, creator of all things. Lord, we come today, first of all, to give you thanks. To thank you, God, for all of the wonderful, great, mighty things that you've done for each and every one of us. But not only us, oh God, but you have the whole world in your hand. And even when it seems, oh God, that things are going away and it seems that trouble is on every side, we are reminded, God, that you have it all in control. And so, God, we come on this early Easter Sunday morning to lift up your name, to thank you and to praise you for rolling the stone away, for bringing the power of the Holy Ghost in that tomb and caused Jesus to come to life again. We are thanking you, God, that we are able to serve a God that's not dead, but Jesus is alive and well. And because he is alive, God, we have life eternal when we give our lives to you. We thank you, God. We thank you right now for the worshipers that have gathered here this day. Those who've gotten up early out of their beds, got in their cars and drove and are sitting and worshiping with us together. We thank you, oh God, for the worshipers online who are tuning in, oh God, to be a part of this service. Touch them in a special way. But we know, God, that there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing too difficult that you cannot solve in our lives. So, Lord, whoever may be going through a test or a trial, we are praying right now, God, that you will bring deliverance, you will bring healing. Oh, God, that you will open up closed doors in their lives. And, God, as you do these things for us, we are going to praise you. We are going to glorify your name, for you are always worthy to be praised. We thank you. All prayers, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. share with you comes out of the gospel of Matthew the 28th chapter verses 1 through 10 reading from the New International Version of the Bible after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb there was a violent earthquake For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen. 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 The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. We're going to be blessed with our ministry and music team this morning as they come to share. You can put your hands together in your car. Amen. gathering to stop you from giving liberally to the Lord. And we just want to thank you. And so we take this time now that we will share in our stewardship moment. And if you have your gifts and you're preparing your gifts, just join in with us. Our scriptures from 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says that we walk by faith and not by sight. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13 says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. And Hebrew 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let us pray. As I give in today's offering, I have vision to see beyond my present circumstances beyond my present problems or crises, beyond my needs and my desires. By faith, I see my God working on my behalf to open doors that have been shut, to open up minds to new ideas and my heart to new passions. I give today with great expectation for my God to do the impossible. Amen, amen. Thank you for your gifts. We praise God that you give as we uh, exit today. We will receive all that you have prepared to give to the Lord today. Amen. 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 Now we're going to ask our choir, our, our, our music team, <laughs> amen, if they will come and bless us as we now prepare for a word from the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need a word from the Lord. And as we prepare our hearts, whether you will pray that God will give us exactly what we need this morning.
that you're powerful. of Mark, Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter, 
verses 1 through 4. The New International Version reads it this way. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Siloam brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. I want to talk from the subject, God is still moving stones. Amen. God is still yes. moving stones. Mm -hmm. You know, our lives are often filled with roadblocks. Our lives are often filled with stumbling stones. Our lives are often filled even with hills and mountains that seem difficult to cross. It is to say that at times, life can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. For every step forward sometime we take, it seems that we end up taking three steps backwards. These roadblocks sometimes look like giants yes. that will overtake us. Giants that will keep us from achieving what we have set out to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. For some people, that mountain, that roadblock, that stumbling stone is an obstacle of fear. And when fear sets in, it will not able us to do the things that we are called to do. Sometimes it's shame. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is a mistake that we've made in our past that will not allow us to live in our future. It may be these failures, these failures because we did not achieve it the last time we are afraid to even try it again. And when this sets in our lives, the negative belief and doubt whispers in our ear and it tells you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. It whispers in our ear and tell you, you can't have a good marriage. It whispers in our ear and tell you, that promotion on your job is for somebody else who has a degree higher than yours. It whispers in your ear and tells you that you cannot achieve great things for God. It whispers in your ear and tells you, stay right where you are. These roadblocks, these hills, these mountains, these stones that get in our way, mm. they are only devices of the enemy that want to keep you from having all that God has in store for you. Yes, yes. But I have good news for you this morning. Yes. The God that I serve, the God that you serve, the God that we serve mm. is still moving yes. stones. Yes, yes. The same way God moved a huge stone on that first Easter morning, he is the God who is still moving the stones of trials and tests in our lives every day. When we take a look, closer look at this thing that we call stones, we find some interesting facts. In our Bible, in our biblical text, the word stone comes from the Greek word lithos which literally means a millstone, or figuratively, it means a stumbling stone. Mm -hmm. We find stones throughout the Bible that was used for many different things. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we find where stones was used to build up, while on other times we read where stones were used to tear down. Stones was used as a pillar for those who were on their journey and they would stop to take a break. They would lay and rest their heads on a stone. Stones would turn from a pillar to a weapon. We find in the Bible that when one would commit a, a sin against the law, that it was legal for those to come and pick up stones and throw to stone a person to death. Stones were used as cornerstones to support a building. They were used as stones to cover a well. When a well was covered up so that, so that the water would stay clean. Stones were built to build walls of protection around cities. Yes. 
Stones were even used to build the altar of God. And then on the other hand, stones were used to build idols and false idols to worship false gods. Stones were used like a piece of paper in the Bible. The stone was used as a tablet because when God was up on Mount Sinai, he took a pen and he wrote the Ten Commandments on a stone. There were memorial stones that, 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 that people would build uh, memorials to remember certain events. When Joshua brought the people over the Jordan, he said that we're going to build a stone memorial so that when our children come this way and they ask what it means, they can, we can tell them that it represents the fact that God brought us over the Jordan Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. on dry land. Yes. Stones, yeah, stones, stones were used. They represented, 12 stones represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Even, Je even David, the little, little, little shepherd boy, picked up five smooth stones and didn't need but one of them to take down the giant Goliath. Various precious stones are, are written about Solomon's temple. Various stones are written in the book of Revelation about the beautiful jasmine and jasper stones that are in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes, stones have many uses. But what about this stone that we read about in our text this morning? What about the stone that the gospel writer talks about Jesus on the day of his resurrection? What about this stone that Mary and Magdalene and the other women finds rolled away in front of the tomb where Jesus had laid? Historians say that this stone is believed to have weighed approximately 2,000 pounds. And it covered the door. It covered the entrance where Jesus' body was laid. This was not just a regular door that could be opened and closed. The stone was there to be sealed. It sealed Jesus in. Yes. When you seal something, that means you do not want it to get out. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. On this fateful day, the grieving women journeyed to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And on their way, they began to think about what they were going to do and, and, and their process. They knew that the stone needed to be rolled away. Mm -hmm. And they asked each other a question, who will roll? The stone away. The reality was that the stone was large. It was an immovable object. And it stood in the way of them getting to Jesus. So that they could anoint his body. These women were obviously not strong enough to move the stone. How could they anoint the body when the stone was blocking their way? But as they journeyed on to the tomb. And when they arrived to the tomb. They were surprised that the stone had already been rolled away when they did not know what to do when they did not know how it was going to happen when they arrived to the place God had already made a way when God rolled away the stone in our lives it gives us hope in times of hopelessness these women saw this stone and they knew that they could not move it. And in their minds, it was a place of hopelessness. But when they arrived and God had moved the stone, hope came alive again. This stone was there to display hopelessness. As long as Jesus' body laid in the tomb behind that stone, it proved to those who had killed him that Jesus was not the son of God. The stone that sealed Jesus, it was a sign of hopelessness to the followers of Jesus who had given a portion of their lives, the disciples who had walked with Jesus and traveled with Jesus and saw Jesus healing the sick. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus lay dead behind mm -hmm. this stone. Yes. They felt that their ministry was over. They felt that the things that they had done these past three years with Jesus were all worthless because Jesus was dead. But what Mary and the women found was not hopelessness. Mm. They found an empty tomb. They found a tomb where Jesus was. Mm. That may be what Jesus told us to do. That may be what's the truth when he said that I'll rise again. They began to put a smile on their face. They began mm. to rejoice. They were yes. afraid of the yes. fact, but yet they were joyful of the fact yes. Yes. that the stone was removed. There are so many people that searching in this world. Searching for forgiveness, searching for hope, searching for meaning. 
And the good news of Easter is that the empty tomb provides us hope in a hopeless situation. Even as we go through this pandemic crisis in this world, we realize that Easter still gives us hope to know that God can move the stone away out of our lives. The great message of Easter is that if Jesus Christ has power enough to overcome the grave, that he has power enough to move the stones that's blocking our lives. He has power enough to deliver us out of whatever situation that we might be going through in our lives. The resurrection gives us hope in the face of an unfair world. It gives us strength and courage in every situation that we face. This 2,000 pound stone was there to keep us out, but God rolled it away so we could go and look in. Why did God want us to look in? He wanted us to look in so we would believe that Jesus is alive. The gospel writer Matthew records that when the women came to the tomb, the first thing that the angel did was invite them inside. The angel said, come and see the place where they laid him. In other words, come inside and look at the evidence. Come inside and see that the tomb is empty. Come inside and look at the grave clothes that's laying there. Come inside and realize that the 2,000 pound stone has been rolled away. And the evidence shows that Jesus is alive. Yes. The tomb that's empty says that Jesus has risen from the dead. And God still invites us in today, into the tomb. He invites us into his life to realize and experience him. And to know that he is alive and well. Yes, yes, yes. Has God ever rolled a stone away in your life? Has God ever made a miracle happen in your life? Yes. Maybe it was a financial dilemma. But God came in and rolled the stone away. Maybe you were sick in your body, but God came in and he healed you and he rolled the stone away. Maybe it was a job that you needed and God got you, a, hired you and got you a new job. God rolled the stone away. See, that stone that was in your way was supposed to keep you down. That stone was supposed to keep doubt in your life. That stone was to keep fear in your life. But God rolled the stone away. And when God rolled the stone away, you began to believe that God has power in his hand. Yes. Not only that, but when God rolled away the stone, people were surprised. Even the enemy was surprised. On that Easter Sunday morning, Everybody was surprised. The soldiers, they didn't understand the fact that Jesus was out of the tomb because they had put the stone there. Many men had rolled the stone in front of the tomb and the soldiers didn't understand the fact that the tomb was rolled away. The Pharisees, they were surprised to hear the word that the one that they had crucified, the one that they had made the story up on, Jesus Christ now is out of the tomb. They were so surprised. The religious leaders who thought that they had buried Jesus, they were shocked on that Sunday morning to realize that Jesus had come up out of the grave. And not only that church, but even his own disciples, even though they walked and talked with him for three long years, but they were still surprised of the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead. There was the greatest surprise that the world had ever known while the enemy thinks that he have your life in control. Sometimes it seems that you're not going to get out of the situation that you're in. But God will come in and rescue you. God will come in and turn your situation yes. around. And sometimes you wonder how did you get out of it. And God will surprise you with a beautiful blessing. You look back and wonder how did I make it over. How did I get out of this situation? God will do it for us. If you will trust and believe. So I want to remind you today. 
that God is still moving stones. No matter what you're facing in your life, God is able. There's no stone that's too big and there's no problem that's too hard that our God cannot solve. There is not a mistake that you can make in your life that God is not willing to forgive you because he's still moving stone. And what I really love about this biblical text is the fact that those women were going to the tomb. And even when they realized that the stone was too big, they realized that the stone was too heavy to move. They kept on going to the tomb. Even when they didn't see a way out, they kept on going to the tomb. Every step that the women would take, it was a step of faith to believe that when they arrived at the tomb, that some way, somehow, God was going to cause the tomb to be rolled away. And that's the way it is in our lives. We have to understand that sometimes we have some stones in our way. We have some mountains to climb. And when we look at it with our physical eyes, it looks like it's not going to happen. It looks that there is no way out. for us if we only if we only believe and so when it looked like it's not possible we must still believe that God can and keep on walking we must believe that God can and keep on talking in faith we must believe that God can and he will make a way out of no way when it seems impossible Keep on moving to the tomb. When it seems that there is no way, keep on walking by faith. For if we keep on trusting God, when the darkness is in our lives, he will bring the sun to shine, to shine one more time in our lives. If you believe that today, honk your horns. That's what I'm talking about. God is still rolling stones away. And that he is more than able, more than able to provide for us. And no matter what you're going through in your lives, know that God will be there for you. When it seems that everything is going against you, know that all things are possible without God. Bow your heads in prayer with us. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your wonderful love that you have shown down upon us. And God, as we come today, God, we ask that you will look down upon persons who do not have a relationship with you. Persons who do not realize that, 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 that if they will put their trust in you, and if they will only believe, that you will be a friend to them all the way to the very end. God, we are praying now, God, that there are those who don't know your God, that they will surrender to you. All they need to do is just say, Lord, I am a sinner. I don't know you as my Savior, God, and I'm guilty of sin. I have not given my life to you. But Lord, I heard today, oh God, that you died on Calvary's cross for my sins. All you need to say is, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I said, Lord, I want to accept you as my personal Savior today. If you would do that, God will come into your heart right this moment. 
If you just accept him, he will be with you right now. And he will be with you until the very end. Give your life to Jesus today. And not only that, there may be persons who have some very difficult stones in their lives. I'm saying to you, trust the Lord. Even though it looked like it cannot be moved, continue to trust the Lord. Walk by faith and not by sight. And know that God is there. God is working it out. And that he will make the difference in your life. We thank you, God, for what you've done, and we are receiving it right now in the name of Jesus. We accepted this word of life over our lives today. We name it, we claim it, we believe it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Beulah, we love you. We thank God for you. We praise God for you that are here. We praise God again for you that are visiting with us online. But we know that God can do all things and he cannot fail. Amen. God bless you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our gracious God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you. We thank you, O oh God, for being out in the open air to see the sun shine and rise one more time. Now, as these, your people, leave this place, we ask that your grace, your mercy, and your peace will be over their lives. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. God bless you. God bless you and keep you. Amen.